The issue I'm going to be speaking on today is the Hearing Protection Act of 2015. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about the issue, add a little bit of background because most people don't actually understand what's going on behind this issue, and then look at how this issue relates to economics. So the article I read was in the Huffington Post, and it was titled, GOP lawmakers want to make silencers cheaper and easier to buy. When I say the word silencers, most of you probably had an image in your head, something like this, which we're going to have to watch an ad. <laughs> well, I'm going to go on to say that silencers is possibly a misnomer perpetuated by Hollywood, which you'll see. Let's just take these ads, you can't skip. you guys had your in your head. That silent thumb. However, as I will show later, that's not actually, the word suppressor would actually be a better name. So the Hearing Protection Act of 2015 is introduced by Matt Salmon, a Republican from Arizona. What he would do is he would remove suppressors under the restrictions in place by the National Firearms Act. Now, the article I read gave the definition from a head at the um, American Suppressor Association as in a suppressor being a muzzle device for a firearm that reduces the sound of a gunshot to about 25 to 30 decibels on average. Something about like that. That's not silence. That's just suppressed. So it would remove all the restrictions, taxes, and regulations currently in place which, yes, a civilian can own a suppressor currently, and place them in the same category as any other firearm, such as a shotgun, meaning someone could go out, go to a gun store, pass a background check, done there at the store, and then walk out that day. Currently, there's a $200 tax on every suppressor. There is a months-long background check conducted by the FBI. Law enforcement, a chief law enforcement officer in your area is required to sign off it. And as it said, this process takes a long time. And the whole point of the article is to make them easier for civilian stone. I have a great interest in this as I've grown up hunting and sh partaking in shooting sports with my family. My dad is half deaf in one ear medically because of growing up in the, six, in the 70s and 80s. They didn't have these and they would have wear hearing protection like they do now. So I see this as a great thing for hunters. So, what is the NFA? The National Firearms Act of 1934 was introduced by FDR. It is the thing that created the mandatory registration for machine guns, short barrel rifles, SBRs, short barrel shotguns, SBSs, and suppressors. It gave the $200 tax stamp requirement, and it was to stamp out gang violence. Um, the $200 tax stamp hasn't changed. It was such a heavy regulation and burden at the time that that is how they made it more difficult to purchase. So the economic issues at play are supply and demand. Supply being the amount producers are able and willing to make at various prices, and demand being the amount consumers are willing to buy at various prices, and the point they intercept being the equilibrium. These supply, supply and demand are driven by determinants. Taxes being one of the determinants of supply. Now this bill would remove the $200 tax on suppressors, causing the curve to sh the supply curve to shift to the right, thereby lowering the equilibrium price and increasing the equilibrium quantity. Um, this bill is mainly driven possibly by consumer taste. 41 states have legalized suppressor ownership, um, and 16 states have legalized hunting with suppressors since 2011. This is Ohio included, meaning you can go out with a small rifle, a small game with a suppressor if you jump through the hoops to currently own one. Um, consumer expectations are also affected by this bill. The bill includes a provision that would repay back the tax stamp to anyone, would pay the $200 tax stamp back to anyone who purchased a suppressor after October um, 
22nd of 2015. This could be causing consumers to just go out and buy it now, causing an increase in demand now, and further increasing the prices we have currently. Um, also, the number of buyers is going to be affected by this because it's going to make it easier for anyone who wants to go out and purchase one to go out uh, if they can pass it back on check. So this number of buyers flooding the market after this, we could actually possibly see an increase in price due to more people, the um, demand curve shifting to the left. So in summary, the Hearing Protection Act of 2015 will make suppressors easier for the average civilian to purchase. Um, it'll have great effect on the supply and demand curves for suppressors. Uh, an interesting thing I learned that I didn't know is that the bill was actually had a clause added for the preemption of state laws, meaning that the nine states that currently do not allow suppressor ownership for civilians, well, they're going to have to figure out something because the law clearly states language that any um, regulation by states shall be void and have no effect. So it's very interesting to see that. Questions yet to be answered is will it actually pass? I don't think we'll see it in the next year or so because it's an election year. And what will actually happen because, as I said, both curves are gonna po could possibly be affected by this, so we don't know what will actually happen to the price. Thank you.